NeoVim is by far my favorite text editor. And with the right configuration, it can compete with the very best of editors like VS Code or IntelliJ or Sublime Text or whatever else. But getting to that point is really difficult. There are tons of plugins and configurations and pre-built NeoVim configs. It's really hard to understand where you're supposed to start and what you're supposed to do in order to get a great Vim setup that rivals an IDE. I imagine it almost like this ocean of plugins and configurations. And in this video series, I wanna be like the captain of the boat that sort of steers you through this ocean and gets you to a nice safe island with a beautiful NeoVim configuration that works just like an IDE. So this will be a series. And in this first episode, I'm gonna cover just a few of the basics, like getting a package manager, installing a few of your first packages, some of the things that I think are like kind of core to the NeoVim experience. And then we're gonna do a lot more interesting stuff from there. So be sure to subscribe and follow along with this series. It's gonna be fun. Let's get into it. Now, who is this series for? Well, it's for those of you who already are at least somewhat familiar with Vim and NeoVim, and you just wanna take your configuration to that next level and take your understanding of that configuration to the next level. If you're not as familiar with Vim, you can exit with colon Q, by the way, then do some reading, uh, practice a little bit with Vim, and then come back here and check things out when you're ready. Now, in this episode, we're gonna cover a few things. Number one, setting up your initial configuration file, the init.lua file. Oh yeah, we're doing this in Lua, by the way, baby. It's gonna be awesome. Next, we're gonna choose and install a package manager. Then we're gonna install our first package, which is a color scheme. Then we're gonna cover fuzzy finding files and grepping through your code base with telescope. And then finally, we're gonna finish things off with highlighting and indenting using tree sitter. So let's get into it. So the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure NeoVim is actually installed on our machine. Now, NeoVim is supported on all the major operating systems. Um, I am using Mac OS, so I'm going to be using, in the directions here, I have Homebrew. So I'm gonna be using Brew to install on my Mac OS machine. If you're on Linux, of course, there are different package managers for different Linux distributions. So pick the one that's right for you and install it using that package manager. And then for Windows, it looks like there's actually a few different ways to do it. Uh, the most popular one looks like WinGet, but I don't really know Windows, so I can't really tell you for sure how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead into my terminal and I'm going to install NeoVim with brew install NeoVim. Brew is gonna run some updating stuff and there we go. We already have the latest version of NeoVim, which is 0.9.4 at the time of this video. And so we can just type nvim and we're in. Now, the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is create our init.lua file. We're making this configuration in Lua, which is a scripting language that has a runtime built into NeoVim, which by the way, is I think the main reason for this explosion of NeoVim's popularity and all these amazing plugins that have come out recently. But we're gonna do our configuration in Lua. And what we need to do is create an init.lua file. That is the convention for NeoVim. And the convention is that we put it in our home directory dot config dot uh, slash nvim slash init dot lua. Now, why do we put this here? What is the deal with this directory? Why is this so special? Well, it all has to do with NeoVim's runtime path. A uh, runtime path is basically the directories that NeoVim will look within to find things that it should source in Lua or in other configuration files. And specifically the configuration for an init.lua is to have things in your local home directory in a dot config directory slash nvim. So anything within dot config slash nvim is going to be loaded by NeoVim. And Lua's convention is that anything that is called init.lua will be automatically loaded. So that's why we put an init.lua in dot config slash nvim slash init.lua. So now let's create that file. We want to open it with NeoVim, config nvim init.lua. And there we go, we're in. Let's write this file with colon W and it is written. It has been written. Now within our configuration file, there's a bunch of stuff we can do here, but I like to start things off with just a couple little things that I like to use uh, throughout Vim or NeoVim. And I have the lines that I like right here. Essentially all these do is um, they set certain values within a Vim configuration that allow me to use spaces as tabs instead of the tab character and to use two spaces for each tab. So whenever I indent, I'm indenting two spaces. Now that's just for me. You guys might like four spaces. You might like tabs, whatever. This is how I like to use Vim. So I start off with this. Now we can write this in our Lua file, init.lua rather, 
And if we try and source it, we can do this special thing where you type colon source percent, and that'll source this file. And if we call source, wait a minute, we have an error. Why did that happen? Because this isn't a Vim script file. This is Lua. We do not write Vim script code in a Lua file. That's ridiculous. So how do we set Vim variables and configurations from within a Lua file? Well, it's done using things called meta accessors or functions that expose Vim's lower level APIs to the Lua runtime within NeoVim. But for us, what we're gonna wanna use is the vim.cmd function. And what that does is it allows us to run any kind of Vim command within the string that comes after this function declaration. So let's call that. So now we can edit our file. And since it's multiple lines, I'm gonna create a quick macro here, Q, Q. Now I'm recording in the Q macro. I'll type insert vim.cmd, open a parentheses, open some quotes, hit escape, go to the end, close quote, close parentheses, escape down, start line. Now I hit Q again. Now my macro is recorded. I can just do at Q, at Q, at Q. And this now is a Lua file running Vim commands for NeoVim. So now if I source this file, there are no complaints. And what happens is that all of my indents and everything else is now two spaces. Cool, great start gang. Okay, so now we have a couple little uh, configuration settings that we like in our NeoVim config. It's time to make a big decision. We need to install a package manager. Now, a package manager in NeoVim is basically what it sounds like. It's a thing that manages the packages inside of your NeoVim configuration. It'll install them. It'll run certain commands that need to be run. It'll have other features, I'm sure, but it's essentially a package for packages, if that makes sense. Now, there are two main popular package managers in NeoVim, that is Packer and Lazy. Believe it or not, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between the two of these plugins. Lazy.nvim seems to have much better performance and it has an awesome UI. But both of these offer very similar features. They do lazy loading, they have some kind of performance enhancements, um, they obviously install packages. But it seems like the consensus these days is to go with lazy because it is lazy loading first. It seems to have better performance and it has an awesome UI. So let's go ahead and install lazy.nvim. Now, the installation process is fairly straightforward. What you have to do is copy and paste a couple of snippets into your init.lua file like this. If we look at this really quick, what we see here is um, we have a local variable called lazy path that's set to a certain path that it wants to look for on your file system. And if that does not exist, then what it does is it runs a git clone command through Vim and clones the repository that we are looking at right here. So essentially this little snippet just says, hey, does this thing exist on the system yet? If not, we'll clone the repository and then we're good to go. Now that we have this snippet in place, what we're gonna wanna do is call the setup function for lazy underneath this snippet. This will actually load lazy for us. Now you can see here we have two variables that are currently undefined, plugin and ops. Both of these are Lua tuples. So we can just say local plugins is an empty tuple and we can do the same for ops. There's probably a more clever way to declare these variables, but whatever. Now if we write that file and then source it, we now have the lazy command available to us in NeoVim. If we type colon capital L lazy and hit enter, we see the lazy GUI. How cool is that? So now lazy is installed on our system and we're ready to install some packages. Now our configuration has some pretty terrible colors. So the first package I want you guys to install is a color scheme to make things look cool and hip. Now my favorite color scheme is something called Catpuchin. It has amazing color defaults, it has an awesome palette, and personally, I love it. It's really, really cool. I suggest you install the same, but you know what? There's a million out there, so look for whatever you like. In their repo, they have a NeoVim link for installation, so we can go over here. Let's install it in NeoVim, and I believe they even have a section for Lazy. Yep, here it is. So now in Lazy, what we can do is we can add to our local plugins tuple in Lua, this line right here. This is another tuple. It gives us a string that is the GitHub repository uh, URL essentially for this plugin. Um, it gives us a name, which I don't think is super necessary for us. And I'm pretty sure this sets 
the loading priority for Lazy. So we can go to our local plugins tuple, create a new line in here and just paste in what we've copied. So now Lazy will include this plugin when it calls setup. So let's quit NVIM, reload it. Let's load it at the file that we are actually editing. And you can see that Lazy automatically detects that we have a new uninstalled package. So it installs it for us. So now I'm realizing this is actually Lazy's default color scheme. This happened because we reloaded NeoVim with Lazy installed, and now it showed up with this new color scheme. This is not Capuchin. To enable Capuchin, we have to require the package and call the setup function. Most packages in Lua export a setup function that you need to call in your configuration. Essentially what that does is it'll import all of the functions and all the functionality for that package into the NeoVim Lua runtime so NeoVim can then execute it. So let's do this for Catpuchin. So underneath our setup, we can say require Catpuchin and call setup. And then underneath that, we can use another Vim command function to set our color scheme to cat poochin. Now, if we quit and reload NeoVim in the file that we were just looking at, our init.lua file, hey, look, what an awesome looking color scheme. This configuration is already looking pretty sick. Let's keep going. So now let's CD into our config directory because I'm honestly getting pretty sick of having to type out this whole entire string every single time. And we can call nvim init.lua. Great. Now the next plugin that I think is essential for a great NeoVim configuration is fuzzy finding your files and grepping throughout your project. This one's a no brainer. You wanna look at Telescope. Telescope is unbelievable. It's an amazing plugin. It enables you in your NeoVim configuration to fuzzy find based on the name of files. It allows you to grep through all your files to look for specific strings throughout your project and tons and tons and tons of other stuff. There's even modules for Telescope. So look through all the documentation here. It's worked on by one of the sexiest NeoVim contributors that I know of, which is TJ. Pretty sweet, TJ DeVries, 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 DeVries. Anyway, we want to install Telescope, it's amazing. So let's do that. And if we scroll down to the lazy.mvim section here, we can see that we wanna to add to our tu tuple another tuple. And then we have a dependencies tag here that is set to planary. So we make sure we install planary when we install Telescope and we wanna add this tuple to our configuration. So let's do that. We go to our configuration where we have plugins. We wanna add a comma after this plugin and then paste our extra tuple in here. Now we don't need any of this extra stuff. We can just do this based on what was given. Now Lazy will include Telescope in its plugins. So if we close NeoVim and reopen it, I believe it's going to install Telescope. Yes, Lazy has automatically installed Telescope and Planary. Pretty cool, Lazy's kind of amazing. But we can't quite use Telescope yet because we still have to initialize it. Now in the docs, it says you wanna set a local variable called built-in to the require telescope.builtin function. Now what this is going to do is it's going to load up all of the stuff in the Lua file within the uh, module telescope.builtin. So what we can do is we can do vim.keymap.set to control p builtin.find underscore files. This is a function in the built-in module for telescope and it allow us to use fuzzy find to find files in our project. So let's quit out of this, reopen NeoVim, and it was expecting a string and it got nothing. Of course, I spelled something wrong, which happens. Um, basically, I have JavaScript brain and I thought that I needed to have parentheses to call the function, but actually what you wanna do is not that. I can now source in it.lua. And that was also wrong. I can source in it.lua and it looks like it's working correctly now. So if I hit command or control P, now I am doing find files, which is unbelievable. This is great. Telescope is amazing. And when you find files, you can fuzzily type what you're looking for. And I'm in. Isn't that great? Now there's one more I like to do and that is live grep, which allows us to grep throughout our project. I set it to leader FG, which for me is going to be space. I didn't even set my leader yet. So vim.g.map leader needs to be set to space. So now if I type, now if I source this file and type space FG, 
I am live grepping throughout my project. I can type lazy and look, these are all of the results from me searching for lazy. Awesome. We're getting really cool stuff here. Okay, cool. So now we're getting a lot of cool functionality out of our NeoVim config. The next thing I want to install is a package that is amazing for doing highlighting and also indenting. And that package is called Tree Sitter. Tree Sitter is a package that provides a simple and easy way to use the interface for Tree Sitter in NeoVim and to provide some basic functionality such as highlighting based on it. Okay, so what's Tree Sitter? Well, tree sitter is essentially a tool that takes snippets of code and generates an abstract syntax tree out of it. Why is that helpful? Well, an abstract syntax tree basically keeps the information throughout the code base based on certain symbols that it looks for, like say an open uh, squiggly brace or an open and close quotes. The abstract syntax tree basically takes all of these things and puts them into an easy to digest format for parsers. And then people have developed parsers on top of tree sitter that then go through the abstract syntax tree and parse out the pieces that it needs to highlight the text that you see on the screen. Whew, that's a lot, but let's install tree sitter and see if we can see anything different happening here. So now we want to add this to our tuple here for our plugins. It is this, and it comes with a build command, which calls TS update. TS is the tree sitter command. So it's updating tree sitter itself. So now to our list of uh, plugins here, we want to add tree sitter. So now if we leave and reopen NeoVim, hey, look at that tree sitter is installed and it probably ran TS update in the background. I didn't see it get run here, but I'm sure that's what happened. So let's see if we can type that TS update. All parses are up to date. Great. Now let's go to our init.lua file using telescope. <laughs> Pretty cool. And let's configure tree sitter for our purposes. So from the docs, what we want to do is require NeoVim tree sitter configs. So very similar to how we do catpuchin or telescope, we want to have a local variable and we want to call require nvim tree sitter configs. So now in config, we can call stuff like setup. And this setup function is going to give us plenty of control over things within tree sitter. We can say ensure installed, and that is a tuple that will include certain things. I'm going to do Lua and uh, JavaScript. And what this will do is it'll ensure that the parsers for these languages are installed in tree sitter. You can also set it to sync install highlight indent, which is what we want. We want highlighting and indenting. We want both of these to be enabled because this will give us both highlighting and indenting. Obviously I type something incorrect. I believe that's right. Yes, I missed a comma. Whoops. Okay, so now tree sitter has installed JavaScript because we say ensure installed for Lua and JavaScript and tree sitter also has Lua installed. And now that we have set up tree sitter by calling the setup function here for config, we can see that we now have really, really awesome highlighting and it looks amazing. So now tree sitter is highlighting our code. It's indenting it and we, it gives us a way to install extra parsers by using ensure installed, or we can use the TS install command. And it's amazing. Just another huge piece of functionality in our configuration for NeoVim. So what have we done in this episode? Well, we've explained how the init.lua file works. We then configured our NeoVim configuration with some of the initial things that I like, like two spaces for tabs, things like that. Map leader is space. And then we went in, we selected a package manager for ourselves and we installed some really great packages to start off our NeoVim configuration, namely catpuchin as a color scheme, telescope for us to look through our files and do all that stuff. And nvim tree sitter for highlighting and indenting. That's just the beginning of our configuration. So stick around. I'm going to have more episodes coming out. Next up, we're going to cover something really awesome, LSPs. So stick around, subscribe. You're going to love it. And hey, thanks nerds.